am Noriko Bullfull, and this is Uncut News. If you haven't heard already, the physical recount of ballots cast in the March 2nd elections has finally come to a close. As of Sunday, the Guyana Elections Commission completed the last of the 2,339 ballot boxes. Initial results are putting the PPPC in the lead by 233,336 votes to the APNU AFC's 217,920. Thank you very much. But don't start celebrating yet, PPPC supporters. The results are not final until they are officially declared by GCOM. It should be noted that before the declaration is made, the Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, must first submit a report on the process. Included in that report will be the over 6,000 cases of suspected elections fraud brought forward primarily by the APNU AFC. So just don't be surprised if you see another court battle from this. In more political news, the Guyana Teachers Union is protesting yet again, this time in response to the Education Ministry's plans to reopen schools ahead of the upcoming NGSA, CXC, and CAPE examinations. According to the GTU, given the fact that cases of the Rona are increasing locally, it would be too risky to reopen the schools just yet. NGSA is set for July 1st and 2nd, July 13th for the CSEC and CAPE exams. The GTU had originally objected to the ministry's proposed dates and suggested that the NGSA can be written in September and CSEC and CAPE in October. The ministry ignored their proposals. Parents, if you're watching this, take my advice. Don't send your picnic dem to write this exam. A short at QC is not worth the Rona. If the ministry does decide to go ahead anyway with the proposed dates, inform the ministry's office on Brick Dam. They will place your child in the school closest to your home. And before we go any further, BM Soaked has slashed the price on this VITS to 2 million cash. Or you can take advantage of their in house financing and pay down 800,000 and 46,000 monthly. Give them a call on telephone number 231 8451 or visit their showroom at Lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. As TJ says, pressure bus pipe and on sunday a burst main at the ministry of finance's headquarters on main street resulted in severe water damage to documents and equipment as well as the disruption of telephone service in the main building thus the ministry said it has been forced to suspend all counter services until thursday However, all other services and offices remain unaffected, including the office of the finance minister. Oh no, a burst water main destroying sensitive documents and equipment. How inconvenient for certain individuals. Since we're talking about water, here's a story that will probably make you spit out yours. The Guyana Water Incorporated is preparing to take legal action against water company Arctic Waters after GWI officials caught the company using a fire hydrant to fill up one of its 10,000 gallon capacity water trucks in Kitty. According to a press statement, Arctic Waters intended to sell the tap water to its customers. GWI also condemned the firefighters who reportedly allowed the company to tamper with the hydrant, which is an offense. Tampering with GWI's infrastructure tracks a fine of $30,000 for residential customers and $65,000 for non-residential customers. And since we're talking about crime, Burbees is in the headlines once again over Kanji. On Saturday, after receiving a tip-off, police arrested a 31-year-old mechanic of Litchfield, West Coast Burbees, who was found to be in possession of 5 kilograms of suspected cannabis. He was stopped at the police checkpoint 
at the eastern end of the Burbys River Bridge. And in non-Burbys port news, on the same day, officers in Zealot, East Bank, Essequibo, arrested a man and a female for possession of 1.8 kilograms of that sticky icky. During the search of the vehicle, officers uncovered 38 parcels of the plant. And if you think that's bad, apparently it's even worse in Parika. Later, the police in Parika, East Bank, Esquibo, caught a 39-year-old female of Laguan Island with 18 grams of crack cocaine and 90 grams of that sweet kanji. She is currently in police custody. And we take a break for a moment to tell you about Triple B's Enterprise. Think of them when you're lonely. They sell big people bedroom toys. Call 682-83-26 for free delivery in Georgetown. Remember the name, Triple B's Enterprise. A 50-year-old farmer died after the tractor he was operating flipped over on him on Saturday. Dead is Ganeshwa Jahaman of Number 73 Village, East Burby's Quarantine. According to Newsroom, Jahaman was preparing the land for rice cultivation when the tractor toppled and pinned him underneath. Nearby workers rushed to his aid but were unable to free him. His relatives were immediately informed and contacted the police. The police were able to remove Jahaman's body from the accident scene. However, it took several hours to reach the location due to the state of the Bakdam access road. On Saturday, 137 Guyanese were repatriated after months of being stranded in the United States. The persons arrived aboard an Eastern Airlines flight from Miami, Florida. On May 22nd, the government decided to give approximately 300 Guyanese permission to enter. However, they are obligated to observe several measures set out by the National Rona Task Force, including a mandatory seven-day home quarantine. Additionally, the Health Emergency Operations Department of the Ministry of Public Health will also follow up with the returnees to ensure that no one later tests positive for the virus. More repatriation flights are expected next week. And now for sport. We don't give two shites about sports. This is not ESPN. I'm Noriko Bullford. Goodbye for now. Hey Guyana Uncut viewers, thanks for checking out Uncut News. Subscribe by clicking on this button down here or click over here to watch more news. Goodbye for now.